November 8th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Ezekiel chapters 31 and 32 from the Old Testament. In the eleventh year, in the third month, on the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, say to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and his hordes, Who are you like in your greatness? Consider Assyria, a cedar in Lebanon, with beautiful branches like a forest giving shade, and extremely tall. Its top reached into the clouds. The water made it grow. Underground springs made it grow tall. Rivers flowed all around the place it was planted, while smaller channels watered all the trees of the field. Therefore it grew taller than all the trees of the field. Its boughs grew large and its branches grew long because of the plentiful water in its shoots. All the birds of the sky nested in its boughs. Under its branches all the beasts of the field gave birth. In its shade all the great nations lived. It was beautiful in its loftiness, in the length of its branches, for its roots went down deep to plentiful waters. The cedars in the garden of God could not eclipse it, nor could the fir trees match its boughs. The plain trees were as nothing compared to its branches. No tree in the garden of God could rival its beauty. I made it beautiful with its many branches. All the trees of Eden in the garden of God envied it. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Because it was tall in stature and its top reached into the clouds and it was proud of its height, I gave it over to the leader of the nations. He has judged it thoroughly as its sinfulness deserves. I have thrown it out. Foreigners from the most terrifying nations have cut it down and left it to lie there on the mountains. In all the valleys its branches have fallen and its boughs lie broken in the ravines of the land. All the people of the land have departed from its shade and left it. On its ruins all the birds of the sky will live and all the wild animals will walk on its branches. For this reason no watered trees will grow so tall. Their tops will not reach into the clouds nor will the well watered ones grow that high. For all of them have been appointed to die in the lower parts of the earth. They will be among mere mortals with those who descend to the pit. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. On the day it went down to Sheol, I caused observers to lament. I covered it with a deep and held back its rivers. Its plentiful water was restrained. I clothed Lebanon in black for it and all the trees of the field wilted because of it. I made the nation shake at the sound of its fall when I threw it down to Sheol, along with those who descend to the pit. Then all the trees of Eden, the choicest and the best of Lebanon, all that were well watered, were comforted in the earth below. Those who lived in its shade, its allies among the nations, also went down with it to Sheol, to those killed by the sword. Which of the trees of Eden was like you in majesty and loftiness? You will be brought down with the trees of Eden to the lower parts of the earth. You will lie among the uncircumcised, with those killed by the sword. This is what will happen to Pharaoh and all his hordes, declares the Sovereign Lord. In the twelfth year, in the twelfth month, on the first of the month, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, sing a lament for Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and say to him, You were like a lion among the nations, but you are a monster in the seas. You thrash about in your streams, stir up the water with your feet, and muddy your streams. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. I will throw my net over you in the assembly of many peoples, and they will haul you up in my dragnet. I will leave you on the ground. I will fling you on the open field. I will allow all the birds of the sky to settle on you. And I will permit all the wild animals to gorge themselves on you. I will put your flesh on the mountains and fill the valleys with your maggot infested carcass. I will drench the land with the flow of your blood up to the mountains. And the ravines will be full of your blood. When I extinguish you, I will cover the sky. 
I will darken its stars. I will cover the sun with a cloud and the moon will not shine. I will darken all the lights in the sky over you and I will darken your land, declares the sovereign Lord. I will disturb many peoples when I bring about your destruction among the nations, among countries you do not know. I will shock many peoples with you and their kings will shiver with horror because of you. When I brandish my sword before them, every moment each one will tremble for his life on the day of your fall. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says, The sword of the king of Babylon will attack you. By the swords of the mighty warriors I will cause your hordes to fall. All of them are the most terrifying among the nations. They will devastate the pride of Egypt and all its hordes will be destroyed. I will destroy all its cattle beside the plentiful waters, and no human foot will disturb the waters again, nor will the hooves of cattle disturb them. Then I will make their waters calm, and I will make their streams flow like olive oil, declares the Sovereign Lord. When I turn the land of Egypt into desolation and the land is destitute of everything that fills it, when I strike all those who live in it, then they will know that I am the Lord. This is a lament. They will chant it. The daughters of the nations will chant it. They will chant it over Egypt and over all her hordes, declares the Sovereign Lord. In the twelfth year, on the fifteenth day of the month, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, wail over the horde of Egypt. Bring it down. Bring her and the daughters of powerful nations down to the lower parts of the earth along with those who descend to the pit. Say to them, Whom do you surpass in beauty? Go down and be laid to rest with the uncircumcised. They will fall among those killed by the sword. The sword is drawn. They carry her and all her hordes away. The bravest of the warriors will speak to him from the midst of Sheol, along with his allies, saying, The uncircumcised have come down. They lie still killed by the sword. Assyria is there with all her assembly around her grave, all of them struck down by the sword. Their graves are located in the remote slopes of the pit. Her assembly is around her grave, all of them struck down by the sword, those who spread terror in the land of the living. Elam is there with all her hordes around her grave, all of them struck down by the sword. They went down uncircumcised to the lower parts of the earth, those who spread terror in the land of the living. Now they will bear their shame with those who descend to the pit. Among the dead they have made a bed for her, along with all her hordes around her grave. All of them are uncircumcised, killed by the sword, for their terror had spread in the land of the living. They bear their shame along with those who descend to the pit. They are placed among the dead. Mesic Tubal is there, along with all her hordes around her grave. All of them are uncircumcised, killed by the sword, for they spread their terror in the land of the living. They do not lie with the fallen warriors of ancient times, who went down to Sheol with their weapons of war, having their swords placed under their heads and their shields on their bones, when the terror of these warriors was in the land of the living. But as for you, in the midst of the uncircumcised, you will be broken, and you will lie with those killed by the sword. Edom is there with her kings and all her princes. Despite their might, they are laid with those killed by the sword. They lie with the uncircumcised and those who descend to the pit. All the leaders of the north are there, along with all the Sidonians. Despite their might, they have gone down in shameful terror with the dead. They lie uncircumcised with those killed by the sword and bear their shame with those who descend to the pit. Pharaoh will see them and be consoled over all his hordes who were killed by the sword. Pharaoh and all his army, declares the Sovereign Lord. Indeed, I terrified him in the land of the living. Yet he will lie in the midst of the uncircumcised with those killed by the sword. Pharaoh and all his hordes, declares the Sovereign Lord.
God in this part of Ezekiel when all of these various nations are now down in Sheol all together and you said you terrified them on land and, and now they've all gone to the depths of the earth and we do realize that this is punishment to them for not obeying you and then I think ab about my life and what you had to take away from my life and what you had to remove from my life in order to get me to pay attention to what I was supposed to, what you were trying to show me. Uh, sadly, it took a long time. Uh, I can look back on my life and see so many opportunities where you were trying to get my attention and yet I wanted my own way. I wanted everything to be about me. I wanted my control. I wanted my independence. I couldn't see anything beyond my world and I was definitely queen of my kingdom and I just as you already know I had a friend about a year ago his name was Brian um, who was in an incredibly bad accident uh, with a traumatic head injury and it's been an incredibly long year for his family and they're not believers and that makes it even harder for somebody who is a believer to watch them go through that knowing that they don't have faith to sustain them during that time and I look at a situation that almost every week or a couple of weeks it seems to get worse even though he's been saved he's actually still alive um, and he's working super hard to get better and just got his driver's license back not too long ago but today they just found out that the job he's had for gosh over a decade uh, they just fired him uh, because of this injury uh, because he wasn't able to do what he had done before the injury and and now his family with kids um, is going to be struggling for that second income and the benefits and different things like that and as I, I write to his wife and and pray for them part of me wonders uh, especially in accordance with the story from Ezekiel. Uh, are you terrifying them on land or are, have you already sent them to Sheol? Is this discipline for something that they've done wrong or is this a way of taking things away from them so that they pay attention to you? I know ultimately everything leads to your glory. Once we realize that, the better off we'll be, but ultimately everything leads to your glory, but I I'm not really sure in your plan for them where they're at but God I do pray for them that they don't have to end up in Sheol like like the nations did or, or in this case uh, be condemned to hell I would just beg for them and for everybody who is who's not a believer who doesn't have their salvation in you who doesn't walk in a relationship with you God I just ask that that they see the work that you're doing in their lives, the things that you're bringing into their lives, the people, the things you're taking away from their lives so that they become dependent upon you. I just ask that their hearts and their minds and their eyes be open to these things long before they end up condemned to hell. All of these nations had plenty of opportunities to uh, come over to your side. Uh, to stop worshiping idols. They were warned repeatedly. And I again think of my life and how many times I was warned repeatedly. And finally, you must have just thrown your hands up in the air and said, fine. <laughs> I'm just going to start taking this stuff away from you because this is ridiculous. You're not even paying attention. God, I just pray for my friend Brian and his family that, that they start to pay attention. That other things don't need to be taken away from them. For them to understand who you are in their lives. The fact that you saved Brian and brought him back to his family. That that was all about you. And if they will just be dependent upon you. And allow you to come into their lives. All the amazing things that you will be able to do for that family. Yes, Brian might not have the job he's had for a long time. But knowing you, you have something better for him. God, just open up his heart to those opportunities. Don't let things like this overwhelm him to the point of depression. I know it must be so incredibly hard if you're not a believer, if you don't have faith, 
how do you get through some of those hard times? I, I don't know and I don't remember how I did it. I'm sure you were there with me even when I wasn't a believer. God, I pray for you to be with families like Brian's. There's so many of them in this world who are being terrified on the land and they're definitely making their way to Sheol. God, just wrap your arms around them. Allow them to understand it is your grace and your mercy that is allowing them to be where they're at right now and that they have been given so much at least all the things that truly matter in this world. God, allow their, their hearts to open up to you. For them to understand that your son died on the cross for them. For the forgiveness of all their sins. So that they could have freedom and they could have eternal life. God, I just ask this for everyone out there who's not a believer. I don't want them to end up like all these nations that Ezekiel keeps talking about. God, with love, please just take care of them. In your son's name I pray. Amen. <laughs>